everybody, welcome back. Another YouTube video. This is in response to you subscribers. You guys asked me to do a video where we disassemble a CHRA, center housing rotating assembly, core assembly, center core, center portion. Those are the, the, the terms used for a turbocharger, less the housings. And that's what we're doing today. We're gonna to be taking this turbocharger or this turbocharger's core assembly apart to show you what it looks like inside. This is a fully floating bearing system. Today, you're gonna to learn something. Okay guys, so this is an HX50 uh, family turbo that uh, we've assembled here from parts and uh, it's obviously in the form of a CHRA, Center Housing Rotating Assembly. So this is essentially an entire turbocharger, less its end housings. I'm going to disassemble this and uh, I'm going to go step by step so you guys can see exactly what is inside. Remember, this is, we covered this in the previous video, that is the direction of rotation. What you're hearing is the heat shield at the back here. Um, that is clockwise and the nut will tighten anti-clockwise. Okay, so that the nut automatically tightens during operation. So a nut cannot come off a turbocharger while running. Even if I leave this nut on this turbocharger like this, yes, it'll be out of balance. And I start the engine up with this turbocharger as it spins, this, it'll suck this nut on and it'll tighten the nut. The nut will never ever come back off again. Take this nut off. First part that comes off is your compressor wheel. Inducer, exducer. All right, so we'll put this down. That's called the shaft nut. I'm gonna pop the shaft out. Here's your turbine shaft. This specific unit has got a twin split seal ring, as you can see there. The bearings will run on the shaft. The shaft or the bearing running faces, one runs in this area here, the other runs in an area there. Remember, shaft, inducer, exducer. Air makes contact inlet with those blades and exits over there. Heat shield. Bearing housing. This specific bearing housing uses a steel insert, which is held in place with a circlip. Always put a cloth over that thing because if it slips out of the teeth and this thing hits you in the face, you're gonna be sorry. Okay. The steel insert comes out and you'll find that it has an O-ring on the inside of the bearing housing. We'll get to that just now. Over there, that separate piece that you can see is quite loose, is your thrust collar. That pops out like so. And there is, I shouldn't get to the right spot. There is the split seal ring. Steel insert. You can see my hands are a little bit oily. Once we've uh, assembled these turbochargers, we put them on the balancing machine and we obviously balance them running lubrication through. This is your, what we term an oil deflector. I'll explain how this works shortly. And you have your thrust bearing. That is the thrust bearing there. Right, I'm gonna pop this out, <laughs> literally. That is the thrust bearing. That is your steel spacer. I'll come back to the thrust bearing now. These are the two steel components which sandwich your thrust bearing between them. Right. Thrust bearing, you've already seen this side of the thrust bearing. Look at the opposite side. They're completely different very very different and i'll show you how different they are just now there you'll find an oil inlet on the opposite side you don't here's your bearing housing and we have two journal bearings already installed 
held in place with two split seal rings. You have an O-ring inside of this groove over here. I'm going to just pop this O-ring out. Try and not damage it in doing so. Just want to move it across. There is your O-ring. This O-ring essentially seals on your steel insert like that. And it is located in the second groove. The first top groove over there is for your circlip. And this O-ring is situated in the second groove. There's the first journal bearing. Just pop it out from inside. There we are. Right. That is what your journal bearing looks like. This is on the compressor side. That is on the turbine side. These two bearings are identical. Compressor side, compressor side. Why? Compressor wheel runs on this side. That bearing runs on the compressor side. That's the turbine side. The bearing over there runs over there. They are fully interchangeable. They are exactly the same. And that runs on the shaft in that specific point over there. You won't be able to, I'll bring this close to the camera. Even though I'm moving it, you'll hardly see any clearance between the bearing and the shaft. This is known as a full floating bearing system, which means that this bearing can rotate inside of the bearing housing and the shaft rotates inside of the bearing. Now, let's talk about the oil feed system or the oil lubrication system. That's your oil inlet. That's your oil outlet. Now, when you connect your oil feed line, the engine pumps oil through the oil feed line after it's picked up the oil in the sump or the oil pan, fed through the pickup into the oil pump, through the block head, and obviously the oil feed line coming then after it's been filtered into the inlet. It splits three ways once it comes into the inlet. One gallery will move toward inside of the bearing housing, toward the bearing, journal bearing on the turbine side. One will move to the compressor side, and the third split comes straight up that hole there. Now that is the oil feed feeding the thrust bearing or the thrust assembly. Your bearing, thrust bearing, thrust spacer, and thrust collar. These two, you can squeeze these two down as hard as you want. The bearing will always move around. There is sufficient clearance for oil to get between these faces, the thrust pads, and, <laughs> and that face over there. Now, this is how the bearing receives its oil. If you have a look at that little scallop or that little indentation over there, that machine face over there, the oil feeds up through this hole. The bearing lies in that orientation. So the oil comes up into that face there. And you'll see there's a small oil hole in there feeding there. which will give you oil for your thrust collar and thrust spacer. Let's reassemble this. Journal bearing will go in. I will need to put a new circlip inside, which I will do. I don't have one right now. I damaged the other one when taking it out. Thrust bearing facing down so that the oil feed can mate. First, don't forget the spacer, thrust bearing into the locator pins so that the bearing itself can't turn and can't move during operation. The thrust collar, which will fit into the insert. Sometimes these are tricky to get in. Right. And then you have your oil deflector. What this oil deflector does is as the oil feeds through the inlet, past the two journals, up and around the thrust assembly, it then needs to drain through what we call the pot belly, which is this area here. 
and then out the drain. Now, in order to direct the oil straight out the drain so that you don't build up oil and have a bottleneck and eventual leak past the splits of your rings, you put a oil deflector in. So the oil will come out, get deflected via this plate straight out of your drain. The O-ring will then get put into its groove. I'll just turn this up. Once the O-ring is in place, I will show it to you. Okay, put the oil deflector back in. Here's your O-ring. There's your steel insert, which goes back in there like that. Your circlip will obviously fit inside, holding everything in place. I'm not gonna put it in now because you haven't put the little uh, retaining clip back onto the journal bearing. And then you would put your heat shield on, your shaft would go through, and obviously compressor wheel on the other side and shaft nut basically clamping everything together. That is what a journal bearing turbocharger with a twin split seal ring looks like on the turbine using a steel insert and a fully floating bearing system. All right guys, I hope that was uh, informative. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember to like, subscribe and post some comments down below. We'll see you next time.